This video is gonna be an in-depth deep dive into the top artificial intelligence group that the world has ever known called DeepMind Technologies. Now DeepMind was its own company, now it's a British-based subsidiary of Google slash Alphabet. And its founding mission back in 2010 was to solve intelligence and then use that intelligence to solve everything else. DeepMind's also interesting because they do both the research side of artificial intelligence and the product development side. And all of that research and product design has been in service of their main goal, to achieve artificial general intelligence. Yes, the big AGI that everybody's so worried about. And although OpenAI is like kind of the talk of the town right now, if you go back in time, DeepMind has contributed more than any other single company. With notable achievements like AlphaGo, AlphaFold, AlphaZero, and the new AlphaDev. But first, let's start by getting to know the original co-founder and current CEO, Demis Hassabis. Now, Demis has a long history of accomplishments, including researcher, neuroscientist, video game designer, entrepreneur, and five-time world champion of a strategy game named Pentamind. Born in 1976 in London, his interest in creating intelligent machines was sparked at a young age by a movie called War Games, which he said he saw at the age of eight. War Games is like such a classic like techie nerd thing. Hassabis was also recognized as a child prodigy in chess, reaching the rank of master by the age of 13. Demis actually took his first step into the tech industry through video games as a video game designer. After leaving school at the age of only 17, he went on to help design the game called Theme Park, which is a game you might have heard of. It sold millions of copies. And from there, he was able to roll that momentum into an entire video game design company that he co-founded called Elixir Studios. And even though he was having tons of success as an entrepreneur, as a video game designer, he decided to go back to academia. After completing his PhD in cognitive neuroscience at the University of College London, where he studied imagination and memory, he founded the company that we're gonna get to know really well in this video, which is called DeepMind Technologies. DeepMind Technologies was founded in 2010 in London by Demis Hassabis, Mustafa Suleiman, and Shane Legg. Now Shane started as a machine learning researcher and Mustafa as an entrepreneur. And together, the three of them decided to focus in on artificial intelligence. Now the earliest days were more about research. They were focused on getting deep mind and reinforcement learning algorithms down. They were combining the two in what they were calling a deep reinforcement learning architecture. But deep mind quickly became the place to be. So it attracted a ton of investment, a ton of top talent. In January of 2014, Google made the acquisition of DeepMind Technologies. Now it was reported that they paid $650 million, which made it one of the largest acquisitions in the history of the UK. And many speculate that it was partially because it was driven up by Facebook. Behind the scenes, it sounds like there was a lot of Google Facebook fighting over this group. But this acquisition was quite a boon for DeepMind in a sense because they got access to all sorts of information, data, technology, processing power, and they did it all without having to give up control of the company. So Demis actually worked out a deal where he basically stayed independent and in control. They were allowed to continue their research and development as they pleased. However, the collaboration allowed them to actually tap into Google's research groups. And as a further wall of separation that happened after the acquisition, DeepMind established an ethics board to look over all of their AI developments. Smash that subscribe button. DeepMind achieved widespread recognition in 2016, when its AI-based program called AlphaGo actually played the game of Go, super popular overseas, and beat the world's best player. His name was Lee Sedol, and in this highly complex board game, he was like a legend. And in this large state space, it takes a lot of strategic thinking to win a game. It really felt like the kind of thing computers might not ever do. So AlphaGo's victory was absolutely a landmark moment in the history of AI. And it showcased the power of deep learning and reinforcement learning techniques. Following the success of AlphaGo, DeepMind actually turned over and started thinking, how can we generalize this so it can play more broadly and play more games. Hence the evolution from AlphaGo to AlphaZero. And even more interestingly, it doesn't need to be fed a bunch of games ahead of time. It can actually learn how to play these games to superhuman levels from scratch. No prior knowledge, just give it the game rules and let it play against itself. Now in 2019, an even more generalized version of this system came out called Alpha Star. And that's because it was so general it could play a very complex game like StarCraft. And as far as StarCraft II leaderboards go, they claimed victory. By the end of the year, Alpha Star had reached true Grandmaster levels. In 2017, DeepMind Technologies also started to veer into healthcare. So a division of the company was launched to go apply some of these artificial intelligence techniques that were used in games into the healthcare field. 
However, it didn't last long at DeepMind because one year later it was actually split off and brought into something called Google Health. So it went up to the parent company. And this is where DeepMind runs into its first real controversy because a lot of people were upset about how the data practices between Google and DeepMind took place especially considering they're now dealing with personal patient health data. Now, DeepMind's work with the UK National Health Services also faced some criticism when it was revealed that the company had access to over 1.6 million personal patient health records. In fact, the UK's Information Commissioner's Office ruled that the NHS, the National Health Service, had not done enough to protect patient data in its deal with DeepMind. Of course, when it comes to pushing healthcare forward, I will say DeepMind came back and they came back strong with AlphaFold. In 2020, DeepMind is responsible for making another very significant breakthrough in the history of artificial intelligence with a tool they called AlphaFold. AlphaFold is absolutely incredible and it's practical and it's helpful. It's an artificial intelligence system that can predict the 3D structure of an amino acid, how it's gonna turn into a protein with unbelievable accuracy. And that capability has a profound impact on the future of disease and health treatments. In fact, by December of that year, 2020, their second version, AlphaFold 2, has solved the 50-year grand challenge of protein folding. Now, for how far advanced Google's DeepMind really was when you look at everything happening in artificial intelligence, they were taken by surprise earlier this year. Nobody really saw OpenAI coming out with GPT-4 and it being such an amazing tool. And DeepMind Technologies' parent company, Google slash Alphabet, was also taken by surprise with how quickly Microsoft incorporated all of the generative pre-trained Transformer 4 technology. And as a reaction to Microsoft CEO Satya Nandela pushing so quickly into this technology, Technology, Google CEO Sundar Pichai went into straight emergency mode and brought multiple research teams inside of Google, Google Brain, which is producing a lot of the AI products that we're more familiar with from the Google end, and the DeepMind team to the same table. And he said, look, this is a big threat. Our money comes from search. Bing now has this GPT-4 generative search. It does seem to be a completely different paradigm. Can you guys help me get this fixed? And the result of that collaboration is a project that has yet to bear fruit, but is definitely going to be a big game changer when it comes out, and it's called Project Gemini. There's a lot of whispers in the world that with Google's data set, with DeepMind now focused, with the understanding of what large language models are capable of, that Gemini will be better than GPT-4 or maybe even GPT-5. Now we'll have to wait to see on that one, but Google's DeepMind is no stranger to large language models. They've already built a model that's called Sparrow, which uses a mix of human feedback and Google search suggestions. And they've even built on top of that a second large language model named Chinchilla, which has a larger parameter size, more data, and performs better. Now, rumors are that the new Gemini project will have over a trillion parameters, and it also sounds like it's gonna be multimodal. So not just a large language model that you can chat with, but you can interact with it with video files, maybe 3D files, audio files, all of that stuff. Demis Hassabis is still the CEO of DeepMind, and he's very focused on still achieving that original goal, artificial general intelligence. And he's focused on making sure that future systems can be able to solve a problem even if they've never seen training data from it. Being able to be in a real world, see a new novel problem, and being able to take a reasonably good action. And recently, when he was speaking at the Wall Street Journal's Future of Everything Festival, Hassabis said that it could just be a few more years, but definitely within the decade. And then he went on to say that we should also expect very capable and very general systems to emerge in the next few years. Going back to where we started, considering DeepMind's mission statement is to solve intelligence and use that intelligence to solve everything else, it seems like soon Demis's job is gonna change from solving AGI to using AGI to solve everything else. Smash that subscribe button.